G'day guys, it's Cece and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be focusing on simplicity. But before the video starts, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friend Sugar Pie as a late birthday gift. Anyways, let's get into it. So today's characters I chose based on simplicity as that's what I want to be focusing on today. Um, the character that I'm working on here currently is called Badger. Um, I'm not sure what breed, but I have speculated it to be a Bull Terrier. So I start off as I always do when redesigning a character and I sketch out my plans that I have for them. So with this character being too simplistic, my main goal was to give it enough detail and personality so that, that the character would be unique in a standalone uh, by itself and still have a lot of personality and look like a fully fledged character instead of something too simplistic that can get quite easily lost in the background. So one of the things I considered when redesigning this character is I believe that it originally had the pronouns of they them, it didn't have a specific gender in mind. Although I leaned more to the masculine side when redesigning this character, it still has uh, neither gender. So keeping that in mind I made sure to make the clothes still androgynous, but as I said beforehand uh, I kept a more masculine approach to this character. Now the first idea I got when looking at this character's reference sheet is an apocalyptic vibe. Now the reason I got this is because of the colour of the original hoodie, which I will later keep for that ripped shirt um, colour. Now I also saw the baseball bat as a fantastic way to embark on a big part of the character's personality. Um, I just instead amped it up a bit again with that uh, more apocalyptic uh, vibe in mind. So as you can see here, I've sketched out a quite dominating pose with the legs separated and the one arm holding the baseball bat resting upon their shoulder. Now this not only gives them personality, but also helps the viewer already read um, the character and their personality and what they may be like. Um, other things that I have added are some bruises and some bandages. This also gives the feel and the viewer more of an idea of the character altogether without actually knowing anything about them. A lot of things speak very loud without using any words and I find the few details that I added really do help convey that story or the character that we're trying to get across. Another thing I also added to this artwork is the quite stern and angry expression on their face. I also moved their hair forward for more of a mohawk feel and that's about it. I am keen to do the line art and show you guys my process of colouring but right now I'm going to pop some music on and let you guys enjoy the rest of the sketch. Um, now we're going to continue with the line art. Now I do here what I usually do when lining an image. I just lighten my sketch's opacity a bit and then continue to line the character in all its detail glory. So I quickly did that lining out the uh, original sketch in three different sizes that I normally use just to give more depth and personality. But right now we're going to move on to the colouring and I'm going to explain to you the reasoning behind my colour choices. So here I start off by putting a base coat down of white. Now I personally don't like using a straight white so mine has a bit of a pinky red tint to it and I go straight in here to the eyes. Now I want to give more of a bloodshot eye look so that's what I've done there with that bit of red gradient at the top and a smaller pupil to show off that more mean and masculine side to the character. 
Now something I had to keep in mind with this character is that it was modelled off a bull terrier or so I assumed. So keeping the markings very naturally shaped instead of the stern clean cut lines really does give across this feel and approach of the real life dog. But while saying that and keeping that in mind, I also placed the markings where I think they would have the most impact. For example, leaving those arm areas quite dark in that black colour gives off the feel to me of more like boxing glove or ready to fight. So making sure that these are placed in areas that allude to the viewer reasoning behind that. Another thing I added was a dot here on the cheek. This also helps bring a special marking to the character, again giving another thing for the viewer to connect with this character and know that it is this particular one as opposed to other characters. I then continue to go into the muzzle area and add a pink gradient. This is because of bull terriers having very thin fur, especially around the muzzle area. So on white fur, the skin color normally comes through there. Now I've turned off that layer as of now just to get in some base colors and not be distracted by that. Just adding in that burgundy burnt red kind of color for that ripped t-shirt, the bandages, and then the bat. I then look back at the original and start taking inspiration for the dots on the muzzle and inside the ears. I begin to color swatch a few colors, mix around with some, and then I figured out the color that I thought best matched and was most natural to this dog. Um, I went into the ears and nose and added these dots that are all messy and around the spot to make it look more natural as opposed to freckles or other things on um, fantasy or symmetrical characters. I then go in with a little bit of shading here on the top uh, just to give a more dirty, muddy and kind of overall bruised and bloody look. This is another thing that brings personality and story to the character without saying a word. So I really highly recommend stuff like this, especially for characters that are fighting or in that kind of industry or area um, to put these things and markings on your character somewhere. I added a few more areas of blood and bruising like the bandages, the nose and the cheek just as touches of um, effect to again show the viewer uh, more of the story without saying anything. Little accessories like this really do bring through the personality of a character. I know I keep saying that, but I really do want to stress how important these small things can be. You take in this information most of the time without you knowing it and put it all together like a puzzle. Your mind is very used to doing this with people. So again, it does the same thing with characters. So these small details really do all add up together to give your character a story, again, without saying anything. It's something that I find extremely interesting and I think we should definitely use it to the best of our ability, which I have done here in this simplistic character. And we're done. And there they are in all their glory. I personally really like how this turned out, but right now we're gonna move on to the second character for today. Now for this next character, I will admit I did have trouble in the coloring process. However, that's not where we are at the moment, so I'm going to explain to you what I had in the sketch. Now over a course of about a week, I looked at this character trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. I originally thought it might have been a corgi crocodile hybrid until looking closer at the face area, there are these long kind of whisker like things and then my brain clicked. It's supposed to be a dragon. Now, I don't know whether this is the artist's fault or my fault for just not being perceptive enough, but I definitely knew I wanted to make that more prevalent in this design. So for a while here, I'm still in the Corgi Crocodile hybrid mindset. So my original sketch does reflect that. However, in the near future, I do make it more longer and uh, represent more of those dragon features that I'm wanting to entail. So remembering that we're wanting to reflect more of this character's personality through this design, I started by adding a few details that would accentuate that and give the viewer more of an idea of who this person is. I personally did 
some research before going into this um, on Asian dragons that are blue and gold colors. I was inspired by the original design here of this character and I didn't want to change too much. If I change too much, it's basically just like creating a new character. So I knew that I wanted to stay within the colors that were given. I start playing around with adding different features like scales on the outside, like on the fur areas, changing the pupil, adding horns in different areas and things like that to try and give it personality. However, you can see that I'm erasing quite a bit and I'm not happy with where this is going. However, this is when I inspect the reference sheet a little closer and notice those little whiskers. That really was a game changer for me because you can see here as I instantly make the character longer and know where I'm going with the direction of this character. So after that next little bit of inspiration I start changing a few of the details on this character. Um, I later on get to the tail making it a lot more dragon like giving it a fluffy edge and then adding the more dragon like details to the rest of the body. I also quickly change the pose as I'm not happy with where the legs are sitting giving me a bit of trouble um, but for now I'm gonna leave you guys with some music and the sketch process and I'll catch up with you guys later to the line art. Again, here I lower the opacity of the original sketch and go in with my three different size markers. Now I just go in here, adding all the details, fixing anything that I may have noticed, any proportions that I can quickly fix, and then we're going to be done and I'm going to move on to colouring, which was a very frustrating thing as I mentioned beforehand, but I will easily explain why so that you guys can understand. And colouring, normally my favourite part, however, this character was a bit frustrating. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to change the colour palette, just because I found doing that would change too much of the character and I might as well just create a new character from scratch at that point. The only thing I knew I wanted to do when going into colouring this character was where I wanted to do the gold plating. The rest was going to kind of be like feeling it out situation and it shows. However, I really want to use that as a point to announce to you guys how important it is to plan ahead and how frustrating it can be to an artist or a character designer when redesigning a character or drawing an artwork for someone. If there is no vision in your head, it is going to be very frustrating and difficult for you to move on with the piece and actually be happy with it. This is a fantastic example of me struggling in what I'm doing because I had no passion or no vision in my head of what I wanted to do with this character. Planning always helps us out, but knowing me, I kind of rushed it and I wanted to do these things for you guys. So it is a great lesson to show you guys as well as a downfall for me. It's something to learn about. Um, however, this is where I ended up going with it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> At least we learned something. So here I'm finishing up the gold plate areas on the stomach, claws, uh, and muzzle area. 
which were the only parts of the character I actually planned out. So <laughs> the next parts are a bit flashy. I start testing the nose colors and accessories like the back fluff and I do get distracted. I left this in just to show you how many things can really contribute to you being flustered in artwork or designing a character. Here I was trying to convince myself that this lighter yellow was working for me, but I knew in the back of the mind I really hated it. Um, so I tried by just redoing the whole character in this lighter color and going in with the gradient more like a wolf. I then realized quite quickly I did not like this either as it looked too much like a wolf to me and I wanted to focus in on the dragon aspect of this character. I lighten up the fluffy blue color and try using that instead but again I quickly realize I do not like this either and I'm gonna have to move on to another option. I quickly move on to the eyes as I convince myself that that's the only thing I actually know what to do as I knew that the body was going to be cool colors I went in with a warm color and tried to make the eye a good and unique part of this character that brings the personality through. I think that really was the thing to help me get started in finishing this character as it really did help me find out what I wanted to do with the rest of the character and I quickly realized I'm gonna go back to this blue, make it darker and see what I can do with it. As soon as I darkened that blue, I felt instantly better. This was the color and I knew it was. So I continued in by playing with some lighter blue gradients here, giving that a really like nighty moody feel to this character, really popping out those golds. I then go in back with that white light blue color. So like I mentioned earlier, I don't like using white, so I made sure to give it a more cooler tint. I then go in with the scales and play around with a few lighter colors. I knew I wanted the paw pads to be a warmer color, so then I go in there with a few pinks from the eyes, and then I continue going back in with the details I was working on before. I had a few more lighter scale colors around the original ones that I put on top just to give it a more of a gradient feel instead of doing straight up gradient just putting in those scales to give the dragon like feel. I also go in and do a lighter version in the ear, realize it's not working for me and do it darker instead. I add some shading and rendering and lighting just to finish off the character, but after I did finish it, I did ask the opinion of my family members and they agreed that I needed to add more white. So as you'll see in the finished design, I do add a bit of white to the lining of the gold in the chest plate area and I really do agree that it does help finish off the character and bring more of that white in and uh, the character's personality. And we're done. Now I will admit, not my favorite, however I owe that partly to the difficulty I had with it. Let alone, I hope you guys like it. And there you have it, two characters redesigned based on their flaw. Simplicity. I hope this was helpful to you guys in some way. If it was, please let me know in the comments and leave a like on the video. If you'd like to submit your character to the redesign series, there's a link in the description below to my Discord where you can submit your artwork. But for now, I'd like to take this time to thank my current Patreons. Make it with Alex, Aqualotl, and Chavi75. Patreon is a great way to support me and help me make these awesome videos for you guys, so if that's something you're interested in, there's a link in the description below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. But until next time, have a great one, and I'll see you later. Bye!